That buzz from beating Man United didn't last very long, did it? Because that, ladies and gentlemen, what you have just witnessed is Mauricio Pochettino's Chelsea. We can look good in moments, you know. We can pull off upset victories over Man United or Spurs when they were flying earlier on in the season. We can deny Man City and Arsenal and Liverpool coming away from Stamford Bridge with three points that ultimately their league table position would suggest, in comparison to ours especially, that they're able to get. But one thing we cannot do is hold our nerve and capitalise when an opportunity presents itself. Because had we have held on for the win there, I'm telling you now, we would have been one point behind Man United with a game in hand on them, you know. We would potentially by the end of next weekend's fixtures, especially considering we're playing Everton who are struggling on Monday night. Potentially, if we had won that game and we had continued and held on today, we could have gone up to about 7th or something in the league. Somehow, we would have stumbled upon an opportunity to save the season. But after seeing what I've seen today, don't believe we can now. Really, really don't believe we can. Look, other results uh, can go our way. We've got, you know, probably out of us and the teams around us, if I include Wolves in that, and then I look at maybe Newcastle, Brighton, West Ham... <sighs> With the draw today, I'd pretty much um, chalk off the chances of us finishing above Manchester United this season. But the other teams there, when I look at their runnings and I look at our running, I'm sort of looking at that and I'm thinking, do you know what? We've probably got one of, if not the most favourable running. And there's part of me, there is part of me that wants to maybe give Sheffield United credit here. Maybe not be so harsh on Chelsea because what I can say is a team that are absolutely scrapping for survival are always a hard team to play. We know that, don't we, as Chelsea Football Club, even as just Premier League fans in general, we do understand that. I remember the great escape, West Brom, right? The OG great escape. I remember them beating, I think it was Man United in that run-in, at least definitely taking points off Man United, as Sheffield United did off us today. I remember Leicester, right? Everyone remembers the Leicester League title win, um, but no one remembers, well, not no one, that's a, that's an exaggeration, but not as many people put as much significance on the great escape that they had before. The new great escape, the one that, in my opinion, topped West Bromwich Albion's great escape. They won seven of their last nine matches. They probably hadn't won seven fucking matches all season before that point. And what I'm saying is, when you get towards the back end of the season, these teams that in the opening couple of weeks were easier to beat, even the opening couple of months, they become real, 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 real tough tests. And we found that out, haven't we, you know? Took points off of Sheffield United first time round, drew them the second time round. Took points off Burnley the first time round, drew them the second time round. 3-0 win against Luton, I was there the first time round, scraped past them the second time around. And you can speak about injuries, you can speak about loads of different factors here, but... Does that not tell you? Doesn't it tell you now? Every time we play someone for the second time, more or less, we get worse. Okay, it nullifies it being that we just beat Man United and they pretty much played us off the park at Old Trafford, but it's not good, is it? It's really, really not good. Let's speak about the match today, man, because at one point, it looked like it was going to be very, very good for us. And we can speak about key moments in the match, you know, and we can feel hardly done by. And the first key moment comes two minutes into the match because we should have had a penalty. <sighs> we should have had a penalty two minutes into the match. We still pretty would have drawn it. Before we do all that, this is the starting lineup that we went with. And I'm looking at that starting lineup, man. Was Malagusto injured? Clearly, he wasn't on the bench. He wasn't available. Um, he was a doubt, wasn't he, for the Man United match? So to come in, to play, to play as well as he did, I can forgive it, you know. And De Sassi actually at right back isn't awful. No, he's not awful. He's not great, though, either, is he? I don't know. Um, Silva. Initially, good to see him back in the lineup. Was good to see him back in the lineup. Trevor Chalabar, I always know what I'm going to get from Chev. You're never going to get a nine. You probably always get a seven. Um, Kukurea, I think we look more sturdy when we have Kukurea in the team. I think we look a little bit better defensively when we have Kukurea in the team. Caicedo, Enzo, you knew it was going to be there. Gallagher, not sure. Not really sure. Because when I look at the way we shaped up up top, Palmer, Jackson, Madueke, 
I'd have maybe liked to have seen Gallagher rested, you know, for this one. Easy to say in hindsight, isn't it? Um, I'd have maybe liked to have seen him rested. Cole Palmer looks like he could have done with a rest. He was also bought off in about the 70th minute or so. Um, and that, to me, very much indicated that he did need a rest. Um, and, and, you know, you can forgive him for that. So that is the way we went. Obviously, second minute, I thought we should have had a penalty. Ten minutes, it doesn't really matter, though, because... Chelsea get a corner, and Thiago Silva scores a nice little placement, right-footed corner shot, but we've got to be honest, um, this set piece shows why Sheffield United are in the trouble they've been in, because Thiago Silva, surely anyone, you know, the set piece coach at Sheffield United should know, he's probably one of, if not the most biggest threat if he's on the field that we could have from a corner, you know, think about the goal against Arsenal, think about the goal against Preston, um, and he scored once more from a corner this season, but the occasion uh, can't come to mind right now. But yeah, you know, we take the lead and I don't know, man. Even then, once we took the lead, I wasn't that confident. 20 minutes in, we continue a season-long worrying trend when Thiago Silva nearly gives away a goal. Um, you know, he's actually... The ball comes down the left flank, right? Thiago Silva does a good job initially of out-muscling his man off the ball. Once he out-muscles him, he waits for the ball to roll out of play. Now, the ball's either not rolling quick enough or Thiago Silva has second force because then he passes it with his left foot straight almost to an advancing Sheffield United player. I don't know whether he was going to Petrovic or whether he was going to Trevor Chalabar. Either way, it didn't get there. McBurney gets onto it, and we were lucky there to have not conceded straight away there. Um, again, it's just a trend that goes on and on and on. And despite the fact that Thiago Silva hasn't been in there the last couple of games, and he's done some good work today and showed a, um, maybe <sighs> imposed a bit more calmness upon our defence... He's got a mistake in him. Axel de Sassi's got a mistake in him. Badia Ashur's got a mistake in him. Fuck me, we better hope next season we see a Fafana and Colwell partnership because, my God, the only reason we ain't seen as much mistakes from them two is they ain't been on the pitch. Um, no, it's a bit negative, isn't it? It feels a bit negative, to be honest, right now. Um, around the 30-minute mark, right, I realised something, and that is that the penny has now dropped for Sheffield United. They now realise that we've switched off, as we do in games, and they've realised they can get something from this game. And at that point, they're really, really starting to pile on the pressure, you know. Sheffield United have a shot on target around the half-hour mark. Petrovic gets down to it. Decent save, parries it, and then jumps straight onto it. But again, the warning sign's very, very much there. And I realised at that moment, you know, half hour into the game, we've got about 80% possession. Sheffield United have had more shots on target than us. So these statistics really just do not mean anything. And it's proved that they don't mean anything because we still probably had about 75-80% of possession a couple of minutes later when Bogle scores for Sheffield United. He receives the ball as he's running past Kukare. You're sort of looking at it and you're thinking, is he drilling this low across the box? Petrovic was definitely thinking that because Petrovic starts to go and he shoots. It goes off Petrovic into the goal one all. Chelsea have only themselves to blame, in my opinion, for this. You know, things just started to seem slower for us once we scored those goals. I get that atmosphere can do it, you know. Atmosphere can very much do this because when the crowd roar, that being said, Sheffield United, it looked like a Wigan game from back in the day today. They had loads of empty seats. But when the crowd are spurred up, it can seem like one team's playing with more momentum, more energy. And actually, they're not. It's just, you know, the, the noise coming through the TV. But at that time, Sheffield United seemed the more likely team to score a goal. We had a couple of half chances, nothing to write home about. Kukurea and Jackson linked up well at one point. Jackson took the ball in the turn, puts it over to Kukurea. Um, Kukurea feeds Jackson. Jackson doesn't know that he, he, he's been fed. Doesn't even get a shot off on target. Sheffield United have a couple of half chances. But that's it, really. And at half time, I'm going to be honest, man. I'm uh, I'm sitting there as I do at half time most of the time in Chelsea games now. And... I'm, see, I'm feeling, I should say, very, very concerned because there's a trend, isn't there, going on here. We never see a better Chelsea in the second half than we do in the first half. Does that not make you wonder, by the way, and it sounds like I'm going in here on Poch, and do you know why? Because I am going in on Poch, right? Does that not make you wonder, what the fuck is he saying to these boys at half-time, man? Seriously, what's he saying to them? Because we come out worse for the second half every single 
time. And you're very quickly going to go, well, we didn't come out worse for the second half against Man United. We were we were uh, drawing two all at half time, trailing three two, and then we turn it round. Isolated moments, mate. We were worse in the second half against Man United. We were worse in the second half of every game, more or less, we ever fucking play. I don't know what Poch is doing at half time, but it's not spurring the boys up. We're not coming out looking bang up for it. And then you go, are we not fit enough? Because we've heard all this stuff about the Gason test, about all these fitness fucking things Pochettino's doing with the boys, but we don't look like we got a spring in our step. Second half. I don't know, man. I really, really don't know. The attack's looking leggy as well at half time. I'm thinking the attack's looking leggy or null of ideas. And then I'm looking at our bench and I'm thinking, right, we got Raheem Sterling and Mudrick on the bench. Two players, by the way, that I will openly admit I've been very critical of at different times this season. But two players that can change a game from the bench. Raheem Sterling done it from the bench the other day against Burnley. Assisted to Cole Palmer. Mikhailo Mudrick gave us one of the best moments of the season against Newcastle when he came on off the bench and scored. However, however, we know, don't we, that Mauricio Pochettino is reactive rather than proactive. So at half-time, when our attack is looking at null of ideas... You know that Mauricio Pochettino is not going to do anything about it until the 70th fucking minute or something like that. Oh, mate. I don't know. I don't know. And and uh, as well at halftime, I'm thinking, do you know what? Sheffield United have got the bit between their teeth here. And like I say, I sound like a broken record here, but if any team was more likely to go on and then score, it was Sheffield United for me. Five minutes in to the second half, McBurn has a, has a header. Him and Trev both go up for it. Petrovic is rooted, so it's a very good job it went wide because he wouldn't have got down to it. Um, a few minutes later, Harmer laces a power shot just wide from the edge of the box. And this is the point here, right? So we're about, what, 50 minutes into the game, 55 minutes in. If I'm Mauricio Pochettino, I am very much looking to my bench and making some changes there and then. Because we are offering nothing. 57 minutes in, Jack Robinson fouls Cole Palmer, goes for the back of him, gets none of the ball, nowhere near the ball, to be honest. Leg off the ground, studs up, he gets a yellow card. So for me, today, we should have had a penalty. They should have had 10 men. But all that being said, would we have won the game? I don't know. Burnley had 10 men. We didn't finish them off. So who knows, man? 65th minute, Noni Madueke puts the Blues ahead. Nicholas Jackson shows his quality once again, taking the ball on the half turn after Caicedo wins the interception. And I should just say this, you know, Nicholas Jackson, he's... Um, Proving maybe somewhat lacklustre in areas that we thought he was going to excel in. And he's very much surprising us in other areas because his link-up play is good, man. Like, his link-up play is good. Maybe he isn't finishing his chances, but especially tight areas, taking balls on a turn, wriggling out of spaces you didn't think he'd get into uh, or get out of, I should say. Nicholas Jackson showing his worth here. I think next season, would I still bring in a number nine to replace Nicholas Jackson if he is on number nine? Yes. Would I possibly even have Nicholas Jackson in a starting lineup um, with an uh, 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 out-and-out number line like an Osserman or someone like that, an Ivan Tony. Yes. I think Nicholas Jackson's good as a winger, man. He showed it here, takes the ball in the turn. He puts it to Cole Palmer. Very pleased for Cole Palmer. This happened before he goes off, by the way, because he gets probably the most simple assist of the season. He just puts a standard pass over to the side to Noni Madueke. Noni Madueke does what we've seen him do time in, time out this season, attempting at least, which is cut inside onto his stronger left foot. And normally what he does, he cuts inside onto the stronger left foot and he whips one towards the far post. This time, he pretty much drills it roof of the net straight to the keeper. But the keeper's already gone because he's anticipated Noni Madueke to shoot across him. He's already gone. Um, again, we look at this and this is so awful to say in a match where we're coming away with a draw, right? But this is why Sheffield United are in the position they're in this season. This is why they're down there. Look at the two goals they conceded. Keeper could have done well better for it. For the second one, um, the whole team could have done better for the corner that Thiago Silva scores from because he's, he's he's one of the most dangerous from corners left unmarked in the box or at least left to run in the box. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. It's funny. Do you know what, right? I'd seen Mudrick warming up just before this and I thought, right, Noni Madueke is probably going to come off here. It could be Cole Palmer because he's looking leggy and something today, you know, there was a point when Cole Palmer was holding his back 
I'm worrying, you know, because Cole Palmer, he was quiet as then. He looked like he could have been injured, but yeah, you know, Madueke stays on the pitch. Mudrick doesn't come on at that second. Um, 71 minutes in, Palmer nearly scores. Um, he blasts one straight at the keeper. Almost a little bit Lampard against Everton-esque. That's too far, way too far. Um, but yeah, you know, that one doesn't go in. 86th minute, Petrovic proves his worth. Gets across to a header. Don't know who made it from Sheffield United, but sort of half shot, half put the ball into a dangerous area. Either way, uh, Petrovic gets across to it, makes a save. And he, he is proving his worth there a little bit. But right towards the end, Sheffield United. McBurney again. He scores the equaliser. It's VAR checked, but it's no point. It's two all against Sheffield United. It's just not good enough. It's really not good enough. And I feel like the the high, the euphoria we got against Man United is going to mask this ever so slightly. But after we dropped points and we drew against Brentford, let's have a little look at our fixtures here. Because after we dropped points and we drew against Brentford, I remember saying, Do you know what? I think that's me done um, with my with my sort of outward support for Mauricio Pochettino because I just didn't believe it was good enough. Now, to give it a little bit of context, right, we've been beating the uh, the League Cup final by Liverpool around that time, obviously. Um, the match against Leeds, we won it 3-2, but Leeds came to Stamford, uh, Stamford Bridge and had a kick about. They were the better team in that game. I wasn't happy with that performance. Brentford tool, again, a game that I felt we should have closed off and, you know, I don't know, man. I really, really, really thought we should have beat Brentford. And then I looked at the Premier League fixtures. And I could probably pull this up from my last video, but I'm not going to have time with the edit. But I looked at the Premier League fixtures, and I said after that Brentford game, for me, Mauricio Pochettino has about three, four matches now to save his job. And I said that I wanted to see us beat Newcastle, I wanted to see us beat Burnley, and I wanted to see us beat Man United. So today, for me to say, right, you know, Mauricio Pochettino needs to be sacked or anything like that, would seem pretty uh, pretty harsh, I think, you know, because when you look at those matches there, right, when you look at them and you go, okay, Newcastle, Man United, Burnley and Sheffield, different order, but, you know, when you look at them, and if I said to you, right, we're going to drop points in two of them games, what one's it going to be? You, you watching right now would have said Newcastle and Man United were the games we were going to drop points in. Ironically, we got maximum points in them games, Life or death games, albeit, and drop points against Burnley and Sheffield United. And does it not leave you so frustrated, so annoyed when you think they're the fucking easier games to win? Oh, mate, it's pretty hard to take points off Newcastle. This season it's been a little bit easier, but I'm telling you now, Eddie Howe's men are good and they're going to come good again next season. Man United, they've not been as hard to take points off against this season, but out of those four games, they're the hard ones to win. We won them. We dropped points at a couple of teams that won't even be in the league next season. And if we had all took points in those games, well, we did take points technically, but if we had one in them games, we'd be right up there, mate. We'd be going into this last final stretch knowing that it's actually in our hands. It's actually in our hands. Now it's not even in our hands. Now we've got to hope for slip-ups. But it would have been in our hands to get some sort of European places, and we fucked it today. Sorry, is that out of order? We fucked it. I believe we have. What have we learnt today? Pfft, don't know. Richard Pochettino's teams can't defend. I mean, it's weird, isn't it? You can say, oh, the injury crisis, maybe the personnel's not there. I don't know, man. I don't know. Even individual errors. Is it, is it just bad timing? Is it just unlucky? Because under Frank Lampard, under Graham Potter, under Thomas Tuchel, all of which were here under Bowley's ownership, I didn't see us making all... That many. Or at look, put it this way. There are individual defensive mistakes at least once every game. I would say twice every game. Whether it's Caicedo, Thiago Silva, Badia Shill. I don't know, man. But there's individual defensive mistakes at least once a game. As poor as we were under Potter, and towards the end under Tuchel, and definitely under Frank Lampard, I can't say I saw that every single time. You know? can't say I saw it anywhere near as much as we're seeing it at the minute. And it's deflating, man. It really is deflating. Because when we look at the Premier League table now, oh, such a missed opportunity. Such a missed opportunity. 44 points. We're just about inside the uh, the top 10. We're ninth. Newcastle, we've got a game in hand on. We could go above them. 45, 46, 47. No. 
we won't go above them because they've got a way, 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 way better goal difference than us. We can go level with them with our game in hand. One thing we're not talking about here is who's the game in hand. It's Arsenal, isn't it? It is Arsenal. <sighs> That's bad. That's not that's not going to bode well for us, I don't think. So when I look at the remaining games now that we've got, Everton, Brighton, Arsenal, Villa, Spurs, West Ham, Forest, Bournemouth on the last day. Me and Josh will sit down and we'll go through this, you know. We will talk in depth about this. But Everton, next Monday night, not tomorrow, the following day, um, I expect us to get a win there. I would hope we get a win there, but do we? It's not even there. It's at Stamford Bridge. Do we get a win against them? Don't know. Don't know, man. Relegation threatened team. At this point of the season, I want to be playing teams that don't really have anything to fight for, and Everton definitely do. So, don't know. Brighton away. I do fancy us there, you know. Stars make fights, and Brighton's style doesn't match up all that well against us. At least not on the results. They don't play bad against us, but we normally nick it against them, and I think we would. Arsenal. Have we got any chance of going to the Emirates? Well, Man United... Playing Liverpool today and getting that draw would make you think that maybe we do. And our record against the big teams isn't great. It's not as bad as it could be. We've got a couple of wins there. And I think that's one game that maybe we could hope for a draw in. But would I be uh, shocked if we lose that game? No, not at all. I wouldn't be shocked if we lose any of them. Aston Villa away. Mixed results against them this season. A loss, a draw, a win. Uh, they're on home turf. They will be pushing for Europe, trying to keep Tottenham at bay. Don't know, man. Don't know. Spurs at home, I think we'll win it. Don't know why. I think we'll win it. West Ham at home, I think we'll win that and all. I think we will win that and all. They'll, they'll be deep in the Europa League by that point. Um, Nottingham Forest away, I don't think we win. I don't. Second to last game of the season, fighting for their lives. I don't think we'll win that one. And then Bournemouth on the last day of the season, I think we win that one. Will that be enough? What am I What am I actually predicting now? I should do this with Josh. A win against Everton, a win against Brighton. Um, let's call it a loss against Arsenal. Let's call it a draw against Villa. A win against Spurs, that's three wins. Um, a win against West Ham. I'm predicting five wins, you know, out of our last eight games. That's too much, isn't it? Even four. Would four wins out of our last eight get us? I don't know. Depends how teams above us do. I don't know, man. I'm rambling here, but I'm just absolutely gutted. Do you know what? We could have been so optimistic had we have won today. Because we didn't play well today. We know we didn't play well today. But do you know what? If you're not going to play well, make sure you win. We didn't do that today. Shitter. Should I even give a man the match? <sighs> Matter way, he always tried to do something, didn't he? Is he your man the match? I don't know. Fuck the man the match. I can't bother with it. People, let me know what you lot think. I'm absolutely gutted with that one. Really, really am gutted with it. Whose fault is it? Is this just where we're at? Am I being harsh? Heart, harsh? Harsh? On Mauricio Pochettino? Don't know. I really don't know. Let me know your thoughts, people. Let me know what sort of content you want to see. Obviously, we've got till Monday night now until um, our next game. But me and the big dog, Josh of Estate, are going to be in the studio, hopefully on Tuesday. We'll record a few bits then. We'll try and get out for you as soon as possible. Um, let me know what you want from the channel. Working very, very hard now to bang this out for you guys. So please like, share, subscribe if you're not already, and I will see you all in the next one.